Hello and welcome to the first in this series of lockdown lectures on German literature. We're going to be studying the Nobel laureates in German literature. There have been 11 of them, which works quite well because this is a series of 12 classes and after today we have 11 left, one for each. We're going to be going chronologically and we're starting with number one, Paul Heise, who was awarded the prize in 1910. And we're going to be going all the way through to the most recent Elfriede Jelinek, who received the prize in 2004. Oh, but wait a minute. Actually, there were 13 people who were awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature, 13 Germans who were awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature. But I'm leaving two of them out. One of them is Theodore Mommsen, who was awarded the prize in 1902. This was the, only the second time the prize was awarded. Um, Mommsen was a historian and he wrote these monumental studies on the history of Rome. Um, uh, classical studies in classical Rome, if you'll permit me to put it like that. Um, Mommsen um, was uh, given the prize for his history of Rome. Um, I'm not asking you to read anything that Mommsen wrote because we're studying literature and not history. And um, the same thing goes for um, <clears throat> Rudolf Eucken, who was awarded the prize in 1908. He was a philosopher. Uh, we're not going to be reading anything of Eucken's. Um, but let me just say at this point, it does say something interesting about our understanding of literature. I mean, even when Bob Dylan was given the prize, there was a lot of controversy that it was given to a songwriter. Um, so literature, what exactly is literature? What is the Nobel Prize in literature? We're probably not really going to be saying very much about what is literature in this course, but I just wanted to mention it. By the way, there have been a couple of other non-literary writers who've been given the Nobel Prize in literature. One of them was uh, the philosopher Bertrand, Bertrand Russell, who was given the prize in 1950. And in 2015, Svetlana Alexievich, who is a historian, got the prize. And like I said, Bob Dylan, remember the controversy when uh, Bob Dylan was given the prize? You might remember the controversy. It was 2016 and um, he was 75 years old, given the prize for, as they said, new poetic expressions within the great American song tradition. Some people were pretty unhappy about Dylan. They thought he was quite arrogant. He didn't even respond to the news that he'd gotten the prize for two weeks. And then he decided not to pick it up in person. Well, one of our laureates, Elfriede Jelinek, um, also didn't pick up the prize in person, but that was um, because of anxiety, she said, anxiety about um, speaking in front of people. Um, Dylan uh, just didn't want to, I guess. So, by the way, controversy has always been a part of the Nobel Prize in literature. I guess a lot of it is just sour grapes. Um, there's a prize like this, the greatest prize in literature, and um, why did that person get it and not somebody else? The very first Nobel Prize, which was given to Sully Prudhomme, the French writer, some people thought it should have gone to Emile Zola. And looking back, of course, um, we're much more likely to be able to identify the name Zola than the name Prudhomme. So what is this prize? Well, it all starts with Alfred Nobel. He was born in 1833 in Stockholm, and he must have been some kind of a genius because he was fluent in six languages. Um, and he was also a very canny businessman who filed his first patent at the age of 24. And during his life, he held um, more than 350 patents and he owned various companies and he became extremely wealthy. During his lifetime, he amassed a huge fortune and when he died, he was worth about 1.8 million British pounds. 
and today that would translate into something like 250 million pounds or um, 430 million Canadian dollars. So he was no uh, Jeff Bezos, he was no billionaire, but he was rich enough to um, provide the funding for this prize. The story about why he decided to create the Nobel Prize is kind of amusing because when he was 55 years old, a strange thing happened. It was the year 1888 and his brother Ludwig had just died. And for some reason, the newspapers all thought that it was Alfred who was no longer with us and they published some obituaries. Now, Alfred looking over um, the shoulder of his dead self, uh, read some of these obituaries and um, what he found was not entirely positive. In fact, one French newspaper headed their obituary with the title, The Merchant of Death is Dead. And they wrote, Alfred Nobel became rich by finding ways to kill more people faster than ever. What on earth made them write this? Um, it was partially true, but only partially true. Nobel is best known for having invented gelignite, um, which was a way of stabilizing the highly explosive material nitroglycerin and therefore making it safer to use. Now, gelignite doesn't really have any military applications. They use it mainly in mining. So the accusation was only partially correct that he was a merchant of death. However, his family had um, acquired their fortune in military applications. Um, mainly, um, they'd gotten rich in arms production and uh, Nobel himself owned 90 factories uh, that produced weapons. One of the factories was a company called Beaufort's, which still exists. And um, it was a, at that time a manufacturer of cannons. So when he heard himself uh, described as the merchant of death, he thought, this is not the legacy I want to leave. I want to leave a different kind of legacy. And so he created the Nobel Prize. He donated 94% of his fortune to this prize. Um, and he established three prizes in physics, chemistry, and medicine, and then a prize in literature. Um, and he actually specified the kind of literature. He wanted literature in what he called an ideal direction, meaning an idealist take on the world. So he was thinking about the kind of writers who show the way, who point the way towards thinking about a better world. We can bear that in mind. We can keep it in the back of our mind when we're reading some of the writers who received the prize. And then he established the Nobel Prize for Peace, which is probably the best known prize that there is. Um, actually, what he called it was service to the cause of international fraternity, international brotherhood, which I think uh, for many prize cycles now, we've managed to reinterpret as brotherhood and sisterhood. Um, so, but he called it international fraternity, the suppression of standing armies or the establishment of peace congresses. Quite interesting. So following the Kantian tradition, which you can read about in Kant's essay on perpetual peace of 1795, Alfred Nobel recognized that peace is not possible as long as there are standing armies and professional soldiers. We're a long way from that recognition today. So anyway, if you get a Nobel Prize for literature, you'll get a gold medal and a diploma and roughly 1.4 million Canadian dollars. What a nice little prize that is. The recognition, you'll sell a lot of books too, so it's not just that money, it's the money from royalties. Um, and it's, it's quite interesting to see what some of the uh, laureates have done with their money. Solly Prudhomme, I've mentioned him, the first winner of the prize, remember him? He used his money to establish a literary fund to help other writers. 
Marie Curie, um, the famous Marie Curie, donated her prize to further research. A lot of prize winners do that. Um, the neuroscientist uh, Paul Greengard, who received the prize in the year 2000, donated his money to Rockefeller University, where he'd studied. And um, when Wolfgang Ketterle won the prize in physics the year after that, 2001, he used his money to buy an expensive motorbike. What would you do with your money if you won the Nobel Prize in Literature? And with that question, I'm going to say once again, welcome to this course. I'm looking forward to it, and goodbye.